Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the Pretty Geo Games video channel. My name is Gareth and today we're going to be talking about a game called Boneworks by uh, the studio Stress Level Zero. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Gareth, you said you're a game developer, not a game reviewer. And that is true. And so that's why this isn't going to be a full rundown of the game or anything. But what I wanted to do was talk about some of the more formative games that have kind of shaped my game design philosophy. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I don't expect everybody to agree with me on this, but I think it still bears discussion. And I think that that's one of the best things is that when there might be some differing opinions to have that back and forth and say, you know, is this something that's good for the industry or not? So let's talk about what it is that I mean when I'm talking about this. So to get right down into it, uh, Boneworks is Stress Level Zero's third game. Their first one, even way back in 2015, Hover Junkers, was already kind of pioneering new technology by uh, doing something as, as what is now commonplace as using a physical space to act as the menu rather than uh, just a bunch of buttons. So they've always had kind of this pioneering mindset, but that's really taken to the next level with Boneworks. And how they achieve that is actually by questioning one of the fundamental set in stone uh, rules of video game design in virtual reality. And to understand the, how profound it is and why this is such a big deal, you have to understand how people used to think about designing VR games. So the old school way of thinking was kind of that everything has to be a one-to-one -one, true to life ratio in the same way that you can't you know, move your head and have any kind of lag going on. Um, in the same way you, you need, for example, if your hand's here and you move it six inches this way, then in game it has to move six inches that way as well. And that's understandable because you don't wanna have a disconnect between what you see in the game and what you feel like you're doing. There's the whole vestibular system, the proprioception, everything, all the scientific goodness behind it. And there was a real concern that if you changed or messed with that, it would create a sense of confusion, of uh, discomfort. And from that point of view, I think that that's a valid point. But if you take that to its logical end, then you end up with the problem of well, if I pick up, say, this piece of metal, this is something that, uh, you know, it's small, I can manipulate it in any way, no problem, I would expect to be able to do that. However, if I was to pick up something like a full propane canister for a barbecue, I wouldn't expect it to react the same way. So when everything has to be one-to-one, -one, then just attaching something to the hand and have it move, you end up with this weird kind of sense of nothing has weight, nothing has inertia, everything is just kind of this styrofoam movie prop. And so the way that the team at Stress Level Zero challenged that was actually to look at it and say, instead of the physical world being beholden to the player's input, what if the player avatar was beholden to the physical world inside the game? So the result that they have is really kind of strange because sometimes you'll be moving and if something gets in your way, the character will not be moving in the same way that your arm is. But I found that it's really not that hard to get adjusted to, and uh, they took a lot of time and a lot of effort to make sure that this was a polished and, uh, for the most part, predictable system. So then what are the implications for this in terms of game design? Well, we have differing research that tells us that some people are much more apt to adjust to things like the motion sickness of VR more than other people. So. It's really that there is no one hard and fast answer that you can say, okay, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. But I think that as developers, a system like this is, for example, something that we can uh, consider. You know, it's not necessarily something you have to do, but if the rules of the physics of your world are consistent and predictable, then I don't see any reason why your mind cannot adjust to it. And the conclusion that I've come to is that your brain is much more adaptable than uh, sometimes we give it credit for. In the same way that a lot of VR players have been able to adapt to motion sickness, I think that there, there is a lot of gray area that you can really take advantage of and really stretch your legs from a development point of view. Don't be afraid to play with the physical interactions of the world. You know, I think that what we have to do is kind of take that fearlessness that they have shown in you know, challenging this, this kind of convention and run with it. I think the main way that anything happens that revolutionizes any kind of game system or uh, 
for game industry is that you take what's expected and either bend it or sometimes break it completely. And I know that not everybody's going to agree with that because there is that conflicting research that says that certain people just will never be able to adjust to things like motion sickness. So will there be people who can never adjust to the idea of this interaction system that doesn't reflect what they're doing exactly? Who knows? And I think that's something that we as developers have to play around with. I think the point of this is that we're trying to create new and interesting experiences that nobody's ever experienced before and nobody really knows are possible until they're made. So what about you? Do you agree with this? Do you disagree? I mean, whether you're a developer or just a gamer, go ahead and throw it down in the comments. What do you think about the idea of whether or not your movements in VR have to be that strict? Because uh, I don't claim to be perfect and uh, what worked for me might not work for everybody. So if you tried Boneworks and you said this is nonsense, then, you know, just hit me up and tell me that I'm crazy. But I think this is something that we really should consider because we need to make these experiences and we need to make things that people have just not tried before. So I know this was a quick video, but uh, it's been kind of a weird week. As you can see, I'm looking a little scruffy and that's because we have a fire very close by and uh, we've been kind of under evacuation warning off and on. So I just wanted to come at you with something, but uh, um, we should get back to some more good old technical game design stuff next week, but uh, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, if you're enjoying this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell or whatever else you gotta do to appease the almighty algorithm. And uh, I can't wait to hang out with you again. So until next time, keep being awesome and keep making awesome games.